This is Linda Shelton, and I'm interviewing Ken and Ar Ardell Noyes in their home in Lyman, Utah. And it's June 11, 2016, and uh, now we'll start. So that'll be for the transcribers to have. And uh, So anything you'd like to talk about? Were you bo both born in Wayne County? Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. I, well, actually, no. Um, my parents were living um, in White Canyon, in what I, I'm not sure what county that's in. Um, it's now at the bottom of Lake Powell. Oh. When I was born. Goodness. Um, there was a VCA that was a Vanadium Corporation of America Mill down there. Um, Kind of a mining operation? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, the mining was actually going on um, oh, like a, a, what's now called the Happy Jack Mine. Okay. There were several uranium mines in the area, and they brought their ore down to that mill, and, and it may have been from other areas. So it was a uranium It operation. was uranium and vanadium, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And uh, my parents were living there. Um, and uh, when it came my time to come into the world kicking and screaming, <laughs> they had to drive to Price. Oh, that is a long way. That's a long ways. Um, they crossed North Wash, as I recall my, my parents telling me, uh, there was 16 crossings of North Wash to get uh, up to what is uh, now Highway 95. And was this like a dirt road? Oh, it was road? all dirt, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, it was all dirt clear to Green River, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Was she in labor at the time? Uh, no. Um, the, it had been determined that, uh, and, and myself and all of our siblings, my siblings, were born cesarean section. And so they had to go up with enough time um, for things to get set up for that. And I was born in Price at the Garden County Hospital. Oh my goodness. And uh, my parents lived there for a few years. Uh, just how long, I'm not sure at this point. And uh, then they left there and went to Durango, Colorado for just a couple of years. And when I was about five years old, they moved to Hanksville. And then that's where I was raised. Oh, were you? Yes. I, I was raised in Hanksville and, and uh, intent on staying there until Ardell changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did your dad come to this part of the country? Well, okay. Dad was born in um, Victor, Utah, outside of Wellington. Okay. Uh, I think it was a time called Desert Lakes. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I think, and um, my grandparents farmed there, mm -hmm. uh, but at some point in time the water went bad. Dad said the water went alkali, oh, and farming kind of died in that area, and when he was, ah, boy I'm trying to remember, I think he said nine years old, they moved with teams and wagons from there to uh, Hanksville. Wow. And, uh, and he was raised there, and except for just a few short interludes, lived there the rest of his life. Oh my goodness. How did he make his living in Hanksville? Um, Dad worked construction and seismograph and and when I was about 16, he got on with the state road. I um, see. And he stayed with the state road department um, until he retired. How interesting. And, uh, so, How I'm great. almost a born and raised native of Wayne County, but not quite. Right, <laughs> right. You come pretty close. That's amazing. It's so interesting to see, to hear how people lived and how far they had to go for things mm -hmm. like medical care and yeah. how 
it was a struggle to make a living. It, it, oh, yeah. it often is. And so, mm -hmm. now what about you, Ardell? How, what about your early life? Were you born in Lyman? Um, well, I was born in Richfield, but my family lived here in Lyman. I grew up here. Yeah. My four sets of great grandparents were among the first settlers in the valley. What were their names? Um, Chapel, Cook, Turner, and Allen. Mm, okay. And they settled around Lyman? They had farms? Lyman and this area, and then Fish Creek Ranch below Teasdale. Oh, I know of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's amazing. The area just below Lyman um, used to be called Jacksonville. Or East Loa. Or East Loa, okay. depending on. <laughs> anyway. How interesting. Yeah. So you grew up around your grandparents, mm -hmm. knew them. Only my first six years. My parents were both the youngest of their large okay. families, and so my uh -huh. grandparents didn't live long after I was here. But you got, do you have memories of mm -hmm. them and mm -hmm. anything you'd like to share about them? Were they sheep ranchers? What did they do for a living? Um, my grandpa Turner, his wife died when very young, and so he had to go to work for the larger ranchers. Mm -hmm. So he spent his years out in the mountains taking care of the sheep. Mm -hmm and other people here took care of his kids. Wow. My wow. mom was 11 months old when her mother died. Mm. So another lady that had been helping my grandma took her and helped with the boys, and the boys grew up, there were five boys. They wow. grew up kind of taking care of themselves and with other people, and, and all of them went to World War II, as long as my, mm. parent, my dad and his dad. And so World War II had a big influence, mm -hmm. too. There seems to me, from people I've interviewed, there's such a cohesive feeling among the people in Wayne County. If someone needs help, oh, yeah. people step in and help, such uh -huh. as when your grandfather lost his mm -hmm. wife. Yeah. President Pace, um, Paul Pace, um, had a, a statement he always made regarding Wayne County. He says, um, uh, Wayne County is a hard place to live, but it's a good place to have trouble. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> very good. Just for that reason. Yeah. You know, if, if you've got trouble, everybody's willing to pitch in and help you. It's a but it's, it's hard to make a living here. Yes. Um, yes. We have six children, and all of them have, well, our youngest is on a mission in Brazil right now. Oh, great. So it remains to be seen what he's going to do. Um, but all of them have um, uh, chosen careers, and, and they've pursued them. Well, three of them have their doctorate degrees. And, wow! And uh, uh, but they're all something that has to be applied elsewhere. Yes. Um, yes. There, there's nothing for them to do in in Wayne County, mm -hmm. and so they're scattered hither and yon. So what fields are they in? What? Our oldest son is a, a doctor of pharmacology. Oh. Uh, our second is an attorney, so of course you Ken? know Kennard. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. uh, doctor of Juris Law. And uh, our third son just barely graduated as a doctor of veterinary medicine. Oh my goodness. And, uh, what gr all of them, those are great achievements. We, we think so. We're proud of him. <laughs> and now the new vet, where will he be? Uh, he's, he works at a, a veterinary clinic is it in Provo or Springville. It's in Provo. It's in Provo. We just moved, helped move them back here a couple of weeks ago. And uh, right now he and, and our younger daughter um, live just across the driveway from each other. Oh, how great. And, uh, <laughs> She and her husband, and they're uh, they're expecting. Oh, wonderful! And uh, so we've we're excited about that. And, That's true. And Ken and Christine are expecting. That's what I have heard. That's and, awesome. Uh, 
we're anxious about that. So Grandpa and Grandma will figure out the road to Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's a beautiful place to visit. It is. It is. I spent, a, I spent a period of time there when I was in the Navy. We commissioned our ship at the uh, uh, Bremerton shipyards. Yes. And uh, so I have some memories of Seattle. Of course, it was mostly in the winter, so. Right. But yeah. uh, it is a beautiful area. That's terrific. And what a different environment with so much water there, a contrast to the beautiful desert. It yeah. will be a very different. Yeah. I hope he'll get used to the rain. <laughs> Kennard will help. Yeah. His wife is from there. Mm -hmm. And so uh, yeah. uh, I think they'll be fine. That's all right. Yeah, That's great. Fine. Well, it sounds like your children have a, a strong value for education. How do you think that happened? <laughs> they didn't want to be sheep farmers. <laughs> <laughs> you worked them hard enough at manual labor. That they That's right. <laughs> they all loved growing up this way, though. I think they all really loved yes. it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But they do know how to work. Yes. And be disciplined. And, and that served them well in their chosen professions. Mm -hmm. And I think my husband especially likes to read a lot and they saw that and they would read. That's, and That's a strong, strong skill to mm -hmm. have. That's great. Mm -hmm. Now Ardell, while you were growing up here, so did you say your dad was a rancher? Did I? His father, you know, his, fa his father's father settled here, helped build the reservoirs and the canals and cleared the land. So it was my father's dream to live right here in Lyman, have his own farm and raise his family here. Wonderful. Yeah, and so World War II broke out while he was at Snow College. So he was drafted and mm. marched with Patton's army across Germany. Oh my goodness. His life was preserved and that is. came back home and was called on a mission. He went, to did, he went and did that and then he came back home and finally was able to marry and raise his family here. Where did he go on his mission? Texas, Dallas. Oh my goodness. It was called the Southern States at the time, wasn't it? Oh wow. Yeah. It was a big area. Huge mm -hmm. and very challenging. Mm -hmm. um, so how was it growing up? Did, was he a sheep rancher? Um, they had a few cattle, a few sheep, and land that they raised. And mm -hmm. they, they raised a lot of alfalfa and mm -hmm. grain. And mm -hmm. So what was it like growing up here? Oh, I loved it. We, you know, we could just go out in the fields and, and chase the rabbits and climb the mountains and you could go fishing. Of course, it was hard work and, mm -hmm. and it was fun to be with Dad when he was moving the cows to a different place. He had a dairy. He bought a few cows and milked them by hand oh. until he could finally one day build a little dairy barn and buy electric milkers. And wow. And he just kind of built it up a little at a time. So he was a dairy man mm -hmm. yeah. then. Yeah. And that means very early mornings mm -hmm. and work every day. Mm -hmm. Very hard to schedule vacations. No <laughs> vacations. <laughs> We you, went to Salt vacation Lake. Vacation was, was between milkings. Vacation. Yes. The trip right. to Salt Lake was when the oldest brother went on his mission, had to go to the mission home. Or, oh, you know, my goodness. A fun outing was a few hours in the middle of the day to go up and go fishing. Right. But we right. didn't mind it. We loved it. So you had lots of chores mm -hmm. and learned how to work also. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Best thing she learned how to cook. Oh, no. best thing. Are you a pretty good cook? <laughs> no. She's an excellent cook. Oh, that's terrific. And she taught herself how to be a baker. So. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. An interesting thing, though, is my great grandfather was the first sheriff in Wayne County. <laughs> really? And he was sent to round up the Robert's Roost gang if he could. Seriously? And his family lived in Hanksville and, and it helped the Robert's Roost gang, you know. Amazing. Traded their horses, left food for their horses and get a little gold. Really? So my grandfather rounded up Silvertip and Blue John. 
his grandfather was like helping them. Oh, wow. <laughs> so when we got married, there was probably a little conversation in oh, heaven. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, what was your grandfather's name who was out in Hanksville? Hiram. Hiram Noyes. Mm -hmm. and, and so he, I understand a lot of people throughout the area would help. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the well, um, you know, the Robber's Roost is not many miles from Hanksville, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, well, I need to back, we need to back up a little bit. The grandfather that this all took place, my grandfather was Hiram, mm -hmm. but it was his father, uh, Frederick mm -hmm. Franklin, who, uh, he was actually a soldier for the Confederacy in the Civil War, wow. was baptized in 1862. Into LDS. Mm -hmm. And we don't know anything about um, his conversion story. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a little bit of history of uh, after the Civil War, um, he uh, went home and his family was gone. Mm -hmm. And um, he was kind of a displaced person. And since he had joined the church, he thought, well, I'm going to go west and join the saints. Mm -hmm. And so he got, a, he got a job on the railroad and came into Salt Lake with the railroad. Terrific. And in Salt Lake, he met my great-grandmother, um, Hannah Mariah Williams. And um, uh, shortly after they were married, Brigham Young called them and her parents, Gustavius Williams and, and his wife. And you've talked to Carol and Dwight Williams. That's yes. their family. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're related. So those are Dwight's? Uh, that would be Dwight's grandparents, parents? wouldn't it? Probably. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So they were called to yeah. go down? To the Muddy in Nevada. A mission. That's all I've ever heard it called. Whether it that had a different name or not, I don't know. Anyway, that, that settlement didn't work out. And so when they were released, um, they just kind of became gypsies, so to speak. And my grandfather, Hiram, uh, in our family records, uh, it seemed like they had a child born in just about every community they stayed at. For As a they while. traveled yeah. through the. Mm -hmm. They yes. were in Canab and, and I don't know, uh, a number of other places. Anyway, they finally wound up settling on a on a, a little farm. They homesteaded 160 acres in uh, Canesville, uh, called Aldridge, and the foundation of the old house is still there. And it's mm. it's one of the favorite hangouts for our family. They mm. love to go down to great grandpa's great. homestead, and uh, um, there's a story told. And I can't verify it as being absolutely fact, but it, it's a fun story that um, uh, great grandpa that had trouble with crop failures, and he was actually off um, in Nevada looking for work in the silver mines. And uh, uh, great grandma had received notice that uh, their mortgage was due. And uh, uh, that the banker and the sheriff were going to be there on a given date, and they either paid up or right. would be evicted. And uh, the night before the sheriff was to arrive, uh, there was a group. Uh, some some say it was actually Butch Cassidy himself, but they were part of the wild bunch. Showed up, and Grandma would always feed him. Well. My, my great grandparents would. Uh, like we say, um, if you're here and you have trouble, yes, people yeah. help you. And they were good for a little bit of gold, which was not something sure. that was too easy to come by. Exactly. Um, and the following morning, she fixed the breakfast. They came in in the evening and, and just stayed in the outbuildings. And the following morning, she fixed the breakfast, and they could tell that she was troubled. And so they asked her what was happening, and she told them, and they said, well, 
how much do you owe? And she told him that, and the one guy went out, and when he came back in, he had a bag with with uh, gold in it. Oh my! Gold goodness. coins. He says, wow. he says, pay off your mortgage. Make sure you get a receipt. <laughs> 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 and so, when the the banker and the sheriff showed up, <laughs> well, that was my great grandpa, but. Could have been. Could have been. Probably. He would have been the only one. I mean, he would have been the one that had jurisdiction, jurisdiction in the area. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Grandma paid off her mortgage. And the banker and the sheriff headed back for Bicknell and at uh, a crossing called Aldridge. They were set upon by the Wild Bunch, who relieved them of their watches, their guns, their gold. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that is a great story. <laughs> um, we we kind of think that it was Great Grandpa Chapel that uh, coined the expression "the outlaws below the reef." Oh. Because he figured that everybody below the water pocket fold was an outlaw, <laughs> and he wasn't far wrong. Really. <laughs> so we've had a lot of fun with that. that he probably get rolled over in his grave when Ardell married an outlaw from the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> what a fabulous legacy! How fun! You know, they were they were just they were people of their time, and they did what we do. They they did what they needed to to yes, survive. Yes, you have to. That's and, right. Um, they left there and went out to the San Rafael and. I don't know whether you're familiar with the San Rafael Ranch or not. It's okay. between Hanksville and Green River. Okay. And, and the ranch is still there. Hmm. And uh, uh, great grandfather and these boys built at least one, maybe two dams for water diversion oh. for the people that owned that ranch. Uh -huh. And then they went into Ridgefield for a while, or not Ridgefield, excuse me, Green River for a while. And. Um, I don't know how long it lasted or what became of it, but mm -hmm. they finally ended up in Victor, and uh, my my great grandfather and grandmother are buried there at the Victor Cemetery. Oh, wow. Wow. And uh, then from there That's back to Hanksville, and, and uh, my grandparents are buried in Hanksville, as is my father. My mother's mm -hmm. still there. Oh, is she? Mm -hmm. Is she still in Hanksville? No. She was originally from uh, Snowmass, Colorado. It's just uh, like 13 miles below Aspen. Okay. Her parents came in actually before she was born and uh, purchased a farm on both sides of the Roaring Fork River and eked out a living. Mm -hmm. um, and and of course, eventually Aspen caught on and took off, and and uh, um, they put in a trailer court hmm. and uh, did quite well in the latter part of their life. But yeah. that's where Mom was uh, when she and Dad met. So that was home. That was home. Mm -hmm. And uh, after they were married, then of course they moved. Um, to where Dad's work was, and, and the rest of that we've talked about. So she, in the latter part of her life, wanted to go back where her roots. Well, she went back up there because um, uh, her parents were in ill health. Oh, I and, see. And um, she and Dad were retired, mm -hmm. and so she went back up to take care of them, and and they have since both died. Um, but the property is still there, and, yeah. and she and my younger brother are taking care of it. Oh, good. Good, that's terrific. So, and she's had, she's getting old, but mm -hmm. she's still feisty. That's great. <laughs> she, that she's still mom. <laughs> awesome. Now, would your ancestors have been in Caneville at the time Ephraim Hanks and his son Walter were there and they built that church or was that maybe a different probably about them but um, I can't say for sure um, they were there when the cholera outbreak 
killed mm -hmm. so many people in, in Wayne County. And I think at the time that was actually Paiute County. I oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. What, about what year would that oh, happen? I wish I could tell you. That's okay. Um, Not a problem. But, but there I was can't. a bad cholera outbreak. There was a bad cholera outbreak, and, and Grandpa's one brother died of it and was mm. buried there at the Caneville Cemetery. Mm. Um, as is he from Hanks. Yes. And, uh, um, yeah, I don't know whether that death had anything to do with them pulling out of that area mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. But uh, my grandfather was the baby of the family. Oh, I see. I see. And, uh, wow. Um, he had a, an older brother, Frank, um, who uh, <laughs> was kind of a little imp. <laughs> The Indians would come in, and Grandpa and Grandma's attitude toward the Indians was, you know, we'd befriend the Indians, and they'll befriend us. And, mm -hmm. and so uh, the Indians would come in, and, and uh, Grandpa and Grandma would treat them well, too. They would always sleep out, just out in the open. And uh, Uncle Frank said they would sleep with their feet toward their fire, because he kept their feet warm. Mm -hmm. And uh, he uh, slipped out at least once, probably more than once, with a long stick after the Indians were asleep. He flipped a coal over against mm. one of their feet mm. and sat back in the bushes oh, and dear. watched the Indian come alive. And, oh, dear. And uh, of course, he thought he was being real sneaky. And uh, one day, sometime after that, he wandered around and actually got lost. And he didn't know how to get back home. But he was sitting on a rock, crying his eyes out. Hmm. And this, this is a story he told on himself. And uh, he sobbed for a second and looked up, and there was a horse standing there. He looked up a little higher, and there was an Indian sitting on the horse, looking at him. And uh, he wasn't sure what was going to happen next, and then the Indian spoke to him and says, I know you. <laughs> you're, you're the little rascal that pushes the coals up against my feet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, Uncle Frank was sure he was going to be scalped right there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the Indian picked him up and put him on a horse, on his horse, and took him home. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow, nice. That's so, great. Yeah, that's, that's one of our, that's one of our fun family stories. Terrific. Amazing, huh? That is awesome. So you both went to Wayne High School? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Were you in the same class? No. Or? No. I was in ninth grade. He was a senior. So you probably weren't really friends. Cause it, oh, very much so. Were you friends? Her, her older brother was my best friend. Oh, that's great. And, uh, I used to go to their place to hang around with him, but that only lasted for a day or two. <laughs> <laughs> so did you date in high school? Our first date was my senior graduation, and she was too young to date. Oh. And uh, I knew it, but I wanted to take her. And so before I asked her, I called her mother, and she said, well, we have a family rule that you can't date till we're 16. My heart sunk. Mm. And she says, but since it's you, I think it would be okay. <laughs> oh, how sweet. Little, little, little. And uh, um, the enemy boats wouldn't want to follow him to the known minefield. What a it choice. Was, it was a an interesting. or a mine. <laughs> it was an interesting situation that we had mined the harbor, but because of the rules of engagement, uh, we had to leave an alleyway for ships to go in and out. I mean, it was, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. That's interesting, isn't there, it? There, there's a lot about the Vietnam conflict that oh, yes, didn't yes. make sense then and still doesn't. Sure, sure. Uh, but anyway, he was successful. He so was able to. So you didn't set off mines? No, he was able to avoid the mines. We did some pretty, pretty interesting maneuvers. What did that feel like? Were you aware? We didn't know. We you were didn't not know. aware of all those no, intricate No, I was problems. down in the engine room. Um, 
I was a machinist mate, and uh, my watch station was, um, actually, I, I gotta back that up, my watch station was on Repair Locker 5, um, and it was to relieve the engine room if there was casualties sustained in the engine room. We didn't know what was going on. All we knew is we were at general quarters, um, and uh, the ship was twisting and turning like a snake. I'll bet, yeah. Um, after we got out and, and into clear water and was making a high-speed run out into the Gulf, then the skipper came on the 1MC, which was the, the main communication speaker system of the ship, and, and uh, gave us a brief explanation of what had happened. Oh my. And uh, he told us we had earned our combat action award, but it was never it was never awarded to us. Oh, seriously! I'm serious. Oh. <laughs> the only wow. thing I can think of is is the political situation with the negotiations and things that was going on. Um, they probably didn't want to acknowledge that it had even happened. I see. Um, there was a lot of that. There is a lot of that. Yes. That was like the the uh, fighter bomber pilots that had to fly over missile sites being prepared to shoot at them but until they actually shot at them they couldn't take them out mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. oh my goodness how hard to deal with it's probably much better you didn't know oh yeah the absolutely. details at the time yeah. right but you were down there just wondering what was going on, and what you knew there was some on. sort of general alert. Yeah. Oh, gosh. And so the torpedoes missed. Mm-hmm. How, how fortunate. Yeah, we, we thought so, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So how long were you in the Navy? I total six years. Oh, that's a long time. Yeah. But Two of that was um, was uh, reserve after four years active duty. I see. And then I went and joined the uh, National Guard for four years. Oh. <laughs> did did you get activated? No. Good. No, I was in the guard when the when the um, rescue attempt for. The hostages in Iran took oh, place. Oh, seriously! And uh, that was an interesting time. Mm. But, and so, the National Guard. How was that connected with the rescue attempt? It, it wasn't. It wasn't. But, but you just heard of that. We we found out military. about it. Yeah. We actually found out about it through um, our uh, uh, officers. Um, before the full details oh, were made available on the I news. See. I see. Because we were at drill when it all came oh down. Oh my gosh. And, uh, was it Air Force or Army that did that primarily? I never, or was it a joint? I Air think Force? it was kind of a joint situation. Uh -huh. um, but to be perfectly honest with you, I don't know. Right, right. I, I don't remember. I probably never knew the details, just yeah. that it was a horrible... It was, it was a mess. Series of it was a mess. Accidents and things. The big thing was, and it's, it was the same thing as us going into High Farm Harbor. Mm -hmm. When you send, when you send uh, American soldiers, sailors, Air Force, Marines, whatever they are, into harm's way, and then try to run the operation from the White House or from Washington, mm -hmm, D.C., mm -hmm. uh, you're screwing up. Mm -hmm. If you're going to send them into harm's way, let the officers mm -hmm. on site mm -hmm. deal with the unexpected. Right, right. Uh, they're trained and prepared. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but we see the, the same thing going on yeah. now. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. There's always the sort of same scenario. Huh? Yeah. And, and these rules of engagement. Mm -hmm. When you start putting rules of engagement on that restrict our ability to defend ourselves, mm 
um, if you're going to throw those kind of rules on, don't don't send the soldiers in in the first yeah. place. Yeah, right. right. You know, give them the mission and tell them to get it done, and mm -hmm. the American soldier will get it done. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Yeah. Well, Ardell, what was it like for you while he was in Vietnam? Well, it was frightening. Yeah, I tried to keep busy with school and things. But and where were you going to school? Well, you were still in high school? High school, well, yeah. Oh my gosh. And then I went to Snow College. Wow. What year did you graduate from high school? 73. I see. And then you went to Snow. Mm -hmm. And that would be very frightening to hear everything in the news and know that he yeah. was there. He didn't tell me very much, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm safe. I'm out here at sea. Oh. <laughs> oh, dear. And so when did you see each other again? I'd come home on leave every chance I got. Mm -hmm. and, uh, That's a long ways to come. Yeah. <laughs> but um, then I was, I was released from active duty in January 75. 75, oh, that's right. My goodness. Oh, and uh, came home and surprised her with a ring. Oh, seriously? <laughs> I don't think it was a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so, for, when did you get it engaged officially then? January. Was it in January? Yeah. You didn't wait very long. Two days nope. after he got home. Yeah. Two days? <laughs> Yeah, I said, I, yeah, I said hi to mom and dad and got in the car and headed for Ethan. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. I had the ring in my shirt pocket and, oh. and picked her up and we headed back toward Lyman and, and uh, I was being sneaky. And uh, we got, you know, far enough toward Mantide that the temple was oh, that's big and beautiful. Um, I was thinking that it, we would drive up to the temple, but I couldn't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Just so, in the distance was okay. Yeah, I reached in my pocket and held the ring out for her and, and stopped the car. Oh, good. <laughs> right, right in the middle of the road. Oh, no. And she squealed and, and uh, took the ring and put it on and... and the truck driver that had stopped behind us and was watching the whole thing go down <laughs> finally honked his horn and got oh, us going. How cute! How cute! Oh, that's great. Yeah. Was it a surprise, Ardell? I expected it, but I was surprised that it was that same, At that, that day. Yeah. 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 So it sounds like you probably got pretty close through the letters as well. Oh, very that much you so. Both knew that you wanted to be married. Mm -hmm. That's great. That is great. And so when were you married? April 29th of, of that year. Of 75. Oh, that's terrific. That was my birthday. Oh. She, she knew my memory wasn't very good, so. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't forget our anniversary. <laughs> that's fabulous. That's fabulous. That's good. And lived for... In Lyman, right away, or no? First live? We lived for seven and a half years. Seven and a half years in Hanksville, yes. and uh, then. My, and what did you do there? Uh, I was in the uranium industry. There you go. And uh, um, uh, initially, I was mining, mm. and then uh, uh, energy fuels nuclear came into the area. And um, they were looking for people to help with exploration. Mm -hmm. And uh, it required a certain amount of scientific and mathematical skills that I happened to be able to do. Great. And uh, so I, I became a, a geological technician, is what my, name, my wow. title was. Wow. And, uh, I worked with them for 13 years. Oh my goodness. And uh, um, we lived in Hanksville for, like she said, seven and a half. And then employment transferred us to Arizona. 
and uh, actually the office was in Kanab, but most most of the things we were doing were out on the Arizona Strip. Maybe Fredonia or mm -hmm. down that area. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah, we lived in Fredonia. Our our home was in Fredonia, and we lived in Fredonia seven and a half years. Seven and a half oh, years, wow. yeah. Anyway, about. Two and a half years into our stay there, wasn't it? When we bought the <coughs> bishop's house. Oh, yeah. Um, our bishop, I was his board clerk, and he uh, was an educator, and he left and went somewhere. Venezuela. Venezuela. Oh, wow. And they put their house up for sale, and we had a couple of kids, and the trailer that we were staying in was a little cramped. Oh my goodness. And so we thought, well, hey, we'll just buy that house, and so we did. Wonderful. And uh, we had only owned the house for just a few months, and I was called to replace him as bishop. <laughs> oh my, <laughs> it was the house. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the one guy I worked with, when he found out about the call, he laughed, and he says, you'll never be able to sell that house. <laughs> That was very young. How old were you when you were called new bishop? 34. <gasps> That's a young bishop. And how long did you serve? Four and a half years. That's, that's plenty. With a young family. Well, and, and my employment was such that I was gone at least four days a week. And so when I got back into town, the rest of the time was spent as bishop and wow. spent just, you know, what, what time I could with my family. Um, one of the, the guys I worked with, a, a contractor, um, we picked him up at the head office and was, <laughs> was taking him to our place for dinner and uh, our uh, second son, Kennard, was just a big chattery boy at that time. As we drove past the church, he tapped the guy on the shoulder and he says, that's where my daddy lives. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> he, he figured yeah. when I wasn't home, I must be there because... <laughs> oh. And how was that for you, Ardell, as a young mother? Well, it, I missed him, and I wished that he could be home more, you know, but I was busy with the kids, and it was life, so that's, right. that's the way it was. That's right. Wow. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sure that was a challenge. What was the ward like? Was it a young ward? A no. It was, it was an old established ward. Uh, there was about 400 and, 460 members, um, probably like most words, probably about 50% were somewhat active. Right, right. And uh, um, I, had, I had way good counselors. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, I, I, think, I think we did okay. Good, good. Um, but there's always lots of challenges. Oh yeah, there's lots of challenges. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the interesting things is uh, we were only, what is it, 35 miles to Short Creek, Colorado City. Oh, seriously? Yeah, and part of our routine was we would open the building for our services and then we would go through the restrooms and clean out the literature that had been sneaked oh, in there from... Really? From City. Trying to recruit right. people. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Kind of, kind of fun. Oh, fun, my funny. Goodness. I don't know what do you call it. Interesting. Yes. Well, your first counselor grew up. Yeah, that's right. Like in his family. Really. Yeah, he was he was um, raised in down there. It's just called Short Creek. Okay. Uh, he was raised out there. Um, until he was, I think, about 15 or 16. 
And he actually got to studying the scriptures and got to asking questions that were deemed inappropriate. And he was invited to hightail. Oh my goodness. And, uh, he did and, and was contacted or got in contact with the church and, and was baptized and raised his family right there in How Fredonia. Far? How far? But he told me he had 23 brothers and sisters. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so and was he ever able to see his parents again? He could, he could go back and visit his family on occasion, but it was, he says it was really tense. I would think so. I would think so. And, uh, How difficult. He, uh, he told me about one brother of his that finally broke away from um, and living somewhere else in Utah um, that became convinced of the error um, but he already had three wives. And he, said, he said that was the saddest thing. Uh, Isaac always said that's the saddest thing. He he loves those women and right. and he loves his children and he knows that what they're doing isn't right. Oh. But what do you do? What a hard choice. Yeah. Do you leave your children? Yeah. You need yeah. to provide for them. Oh, I hadn't ever encountered that situation, yeah. so that hadn't thought about that. And uh, he told me, he says, if I, if I want to know what the church is doing or what the brethren are saying, he says, all I need to do is call my brother because he follows them religiously. Really? But he doesn't know what to do. I mean, he's, oh, he's, so he's, still he's, be is he's in between a rock and a hard place. So he's still in the same situation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would be a hard choice. What a heartbreak. Yeah. Hmm. I, 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 often wondered, <coughs> I often wondered if I was a priesthood leader and he was seeking counsel and direction, what I would tell him. <coughs> glad, I, glad I haven't faced that one. <laughs> right. That would be a very hard choice. Yeah. Very hard. <coughs> I think I've got a cough drop in here that'll save me. Um, so, how long do you live in Fredonia? <coughs> You're the... It was about eight years. Wow. And then you came to Lyman? Mm -hmm. That is great. Yeah. I was given the opportunity with Energy Fuels, I guess you'd call it an opportunity. Uh, I was working uh, my uh, crew out in uh, Winnemucca, Nevada. And the head office called and told me when I got back to uh, Fredonia to make sure I got my passport up to date because they wanted me to go to uh, Venezuela uh, and oversee an operation down there for 120 days at a time unaccompanied. Oh, that's and terrible. That we were, our family was being transferred to Denver to the head office and we tried to put a happy face on it. Ardell was pregnant with Leanna. Mm, okay. And oh. uh, we went to Denver and, and looked at homes and we found a home we liked. And it was in a wonderful neighborhood. And it was only a few blocks away from, from uh, high school. And, and, uh, Which by the way is Columbine High School? Oh, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Anyway, and we were, we were going ahead. Mm -hmm. And uh, our oldest, Albert, was just 11 years old. 10, 11, somewhere in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And we got home from that, and he came in on a Sunday afternoon excited about something his primary teacher had told him about the priesthood. And he came to dad to ask. And I answered his question and it hit me mm. that if I went ahead with this, 
he was going to have to ask somebody else those questions because I wasn't going to be there. Yeah. And that was that was the thing that tipped it for us. So we started looking for something else to do, and and uh, of course we contacted our parents. That's what you do. And Grandpa Kennard says, "Well, I've got something you can do," which. I wasn't really that interested in, um, but as time went on, we were kind of led to feel like that's what we should do, Good. and uh, so we wound up here. And that was sheep ranching? That uh, was sheep ranching, dairy uh, farming. So you really didn't have experience with that before? No. Uh -uh. My dad had a farm in, in uh, Hanksville, um, but we just raised feed and, and uh, hogs and, and cattle, mm -hmm. um, a few milk cows, that, just for personal use. Right. right. Um, but I hadn't run into anything like this. Yeah. And, uh, what did you think of it at first? What am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> what a change from the work you've been doing. Yeah. Now you never had any adverse health effects from uranium. You weren't contacting no. it directly. Yes, but sometimes. not over not over a, a long enough period of time. Okay. You weren't um, exposed. My actual yourself. times time in the mines. Was, was just a few years. Um, mm -hmm. Once I shifted over to the exploration department, um, we spent our time looking for the deposits, but we weren't mm -hmm. in production of it. So. Okay. You weren't so. inhaling dust or anything? No. Uh -uh. Good, good. So we... Uh, and yeah. so the sheep ranching was just a huge change. <laughs> Yeah, but it was a good, it, you know, it was good. Um, I think the Lord helped us, how do I say this? I think the Lord helped us in spite of ourselves. Uh-huh. Um, I think this was an environment that Ardell and I could raise our family in. Uh, I think... As I've looked back on, besides the fact that we would have had two children in Columbine High School at the oh, time, gosh. Um, uh, I'm not sure we would have been equal to raising our kids in the environment mm -hmm. there like we were here. Here we had, you know, they had a grandparents just down the road. Mm -hmm. and. And there was always something real for them to do. Right. It wasn't it wasn't make work. It was it was real work. It needed to be done. There's a big difference there. Huh? Yeah. Um, several years after we were here, I, I was coming home um, from checking on the sheep uh, out at what's called the Antelope Spring, and I had my uh, two middle boys in the truck with me. Um, I think Albert was actually on his mission at the time in the Philippines. And uh, as we were coming back toward the Forest Service boundary, we had to stop because there was a group of the Aspen Achievement Academy oh, and, yes. okay, mm -hmm. crossing the road, and so we stopped for them. And, and of course, those young people and my two boys, they made eye contact with each other. Yeah. Um, and when they got clear and we started off, I asked, what do you think of those Aspen kids, guys? And I got the smart alecky answers that I expected, <laughs> you know. What and did they say? I don't remember now. Yeah. <laughs> I, re I remember the final comment. Uh, we'd got a mile or so down the road and I thought, I thought the whole situation was over and done with. And uh, Kennard, our second son, he says, I'll tell you one thing about those Aspen kids, Dad. And I said, uh, what's that, pal? <clears throat> he said, uh, they didn't get up in the morning and go change sprinklers with their dad. 
Oh, that's great. And, that you know, it was, it was all worth it. Yes, yes. As a teenager, you could say that. That's fabulous. Because there's so much between those lines, huh? Yeah. Of the bonds that were there and the values that he was able to learn. It's, it's been difficult as my health has deteriorated. I have a, a real aggressive form of rheumatoid arthritis. Oh. And uh, uh, I receive treatment through the veterans. Um, and uh, I was out bailing one night and having a pity party. Mm. You know, when you're all alone, and it's just you and your thoughts. And then a lot of pain. Go ahead, go ahead and have a pity party, right? <laughs> anyway, I was I was feeling sorry for me and thinking of all the things I could have done if I'd have chose differently and wouldn't have to be doing the hard physical work. And, and uh, I finally quit whining to myself long enough that. Uh, the spirit was able to get through to me, and uh, the thought was impressed on my mind. Now this is <clears throat> said, your grandchildren were born in the covenant. Oh. And I realized that, well, yes, there's been a price to pay for this lifestyle, this life. Um, the rewards have been far greater. That's right. We will soon have ten grandchildren, and that still holds true. Oh, that's wonderful. So. It's a great blessing. The kids spent a lot of time just with their dad, you know, mm -hmm. helping with the animals and with the farm work. Just being with dad, talking about whatever was mm -hmm. on their minds and the questions in their mind that he was there, they could ask it. And he gave them an honest answer. That's right. And those opportunities wouldn't have been there. No. With another situation. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. You know, um, even a, even a local employment where, like if I were working for the Forest Service or something, the kids couldn't have been with me. Right. And, and our girls, um, we opened the bakery, the one that's in Royals Market. Oh, we, right. act, we actually opened it in this building right over here. That's what we bought it for. Oh my goodness. And so when our girls reached the point where they wanted to work and earn a little money, they can work with the mom at the bakery. That's great. That is great. Now, does, is this still open, or is no? Or uh -huh. Now you work out of Royals. Yeah. Right. Grocery. When they, when Royals Market built the market that's there, um, they came over and gave us the opportunity to move in. Terrific. There. Of course, location is everything. Yes. And so we did. Now that means some early mornings for both of you then. Just for her. <laughs> My job was to get her up and out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> how early? How early do you start, Adele? Well, um, for a while I would go over there at four o'clock, but then other women, you know, wanted jobs and they kind of took the early part. So I, most of the time I was able to get kids to school before I went. She's done so well. <laughs> that is terrific. She received lots of help. Again, there was there was things basically walked in the door and said, here we are, we're going to help you. Oh. There was a, um, will you tell them about it, the, the gentleman that had taught the bakery? Oh, we were just traveling through here, he and his wife, and just stopped by and bought a treat and stayed and visited a while, and I guess he had a really nice bakery in New York, someplace back east, and then moved down to Arizona to retire and did a small bakery there. He um, later sent me, a, a like that thick, a binder full of recipes and advice. Really? And 
he was just happy that someone was interested in listening to him. So How he shared neat. a lot of information. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, just a lot of help over the years, all kinds of What kind of things do you make? Breads, cakes, pies, cookies. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Wonderful. That is great. And that takes a lot of work. And you have to be a good manager as well. You have to take care of the financial end of things and managing all of that. The costs and the prices mm -hmm. and keep the profit margin. Mm -hmm. oh, terrific. So you just learned all that as you went along, huh? Yeah. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> that is amazing. That is amazing. Now, um, how has it been for you raising the children? Um, do you f you've already said you felt like raising them in this environment was an advantage. Huh? And were there challenges, too? Yeah, but mostly I didn't think of them as a challenge until it was passed. Ah. Yeah, we just take each day and do just what do needs it. to be done. And just do it. Yeah. yeah. And most of your kids felt okay about things as far as rules, the work, they were yeah. they were really pleasant and happy with life. They, you know, they had enough being able to ride horses and you know swim in the streams right. and go fishing and there was enough fun that it was okay. Yeah. And when they would do the really hard jobs with the sheep or at the dairy or whatever, Ken would just you know laugh with them, tell jokes, and and they made it fun. Sing songs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's great. That was great. We were we were blessed. Um, we never had what I would call a rebellious child. Oh, that's terrific. Uh, that's terrific. And, uh, when evening came, they all wanted to be home. And they were each other's best friends. And, Wonderful. And they liked music. The boys kind of taught themselves to play guitar, and they liked to do that wow. together. And they would invite friends over to the backyard, and, oh, nice. or after the bakery was gone, they kind of set up a little oh, hangout. How nice. <laughs> how nice. So we were really lucky. God sent us good kids, because he knew we couldn't handle the That's rebellious right. kind. <laughs> That's right. Uh, um, and I imagine there's some so challenges tricky. financially. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd say. Learning, that, and that's a large management job, too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we had to get by with very little, and and the kids were fine with whatever clothes that they could have. Right. And at one point, one of my da oldest daughter's friends, you know, introduced her to silver jeans, fifty dollar <laughs> jeans. <laughs> she loved them and wanted them, and mm -hmm. so she earned her money and knew that two pair was what she had to do with, right. for the school year, and she was fine with that. And that's a good lesson, isn't it? Mm -hmm having to earn the money and to know yeah. the requirements and the restrictions. Right, yeah. Terrific. Good, good lesson. And we were mentioning before, Ardell, how the park maybe has affected um, your ranching or operation of the family. Anything there that comes to mind? Um. I don't think it's had. I don't think it's had that direct an impact on our part of it. It's. It had uh, an impact uh, early on, with uh, those that used public land to graze their cattle on, because um, they would trail the cattle from here down to Ward Hanksville, down to the desert, and back and forth, and and I think. Some of the original uh, land users that way, um, well, I know they had, and they may still have if they chose to use it, uh, the right to trail the cattle through the, the park. Mm -hmm. um, but I think with the road the way it is now, paved and, and nice, it's um, actually more economical to, to truck them. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, 
So I don't know uh, how much of a impact really the uh, the park has had. Um, I think on our operation here at Chapel Farms, I don't think it's had that big an impact on it. Okay. Now, where do you graze your sheep? Uh, we no longer have the sheep. Oh, okay. Yeah. How, what, what's the story we, behind we, that? We sold them a few years ago. Um, well, for one, uh, there's four of us that primarily run the operation. And the other kids are just like our kids. They, they grew up and, and they chose professions. And, Ardell's one brother, Merrill's just younger than me, right? Um, his, his son is a, a, a podiatrist, a doctor of podiatry. And, uh, uh, you know, all of them have, have chosen wonderful professions. Right. And, and um, so there was no reason to keep the ranch to hand it on well, yeah, the, to kids the or sheep. grandkids. Um, and, I don't know, the sheep were kind of not a favorite yeah. and I don't understand everything about it uh, that had kind of become an established thing before we came onto the picture oh okay and uh, well, then Ken and our boys mostly took care of the sheep how many head did you have uh, we had 1300 oh it's huge it was a lot of work and where did you graze them um, out on the Parker and then we had a, a we had a, pasture right on top of Boulder Mountain oh, and we loved you. that. So would you go up there in the summers? Who would stay with the sheep? We would hire a herder mm -hmm. uh, but there was always times when they had to leave and yeah. that was when I and my boys or or my oldest daughter she she loved it I mean to go up there go you? up and spend the time and, mm -hmm. and uh, now what is the Parker? Uh, it's just this area out here, uh, the boulder below um, the boulder, these lower foothills uh, called the Parker. Okay. Is that public land? Yes. Uh -huh. And so you had grazing We had grazing there. rights on that. Mm -hmm. okay. BLM and, and a lot of it was um, Utah State Trust Lands. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And then when we got off of that, we would go on to the Forest Service. And and so that worked out pretty well. Mm -hmm. And so then when did you sell the sheep? Oh my. I don't. About five years ago? Five or six years ago, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was but that? My boys were grown and gone, sure. and all the other boys were grown and gone. And, sure. and the realization was is we had four old men that were trying to do more than we could do. <laughs> You know, so. so it was a relief. In was it a sad thing too? Initially, but it didn't take long to realize. Wow, glad I don't have to spend March and April lambing. Right. <laughs> what's it, what's involved with lambing? You got to be there with them as much of the time as you can. Um, usually, you're lambing when it's still quite cold. Ah. If you don't get them in and get them dried off, um, you get a little milk into them, they'll die. Mm -hmm. They die anyway. Yeah. Grandpa yeah. Chapel always said, sheep were born to die. <laughs> they close both eyes at the same time, they're dead. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> and it, it was almost that bad. A ewe isn't just naturally maternal to take care of her babies. They kind of have to put her in a little pen by herself with her baby or babies for them to have time to learn to nurse and all right. those yeah. things right yeah and so you're right there with the herd mm -hmm. and it's 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 long hours that's the biggest thing it's not that hard but it's it's long hours and it's frustrating hours and it's sleep cold. deprivation and it's cold and yeah mm -hmm. wow and uh, so you know um you miss it, but then after a while you realize 
Bangless is nice. <laughs> Right, right. It was an adjustment. Yeah. A different lifestyle. Yeah. Period of adjustment. So now um, you still grow alfalfa? Is yes. That... We we still have the dairy. Oh, we do? got a 300 cow dairy. Oh my gosh. And uh, we raise um, basically everything we feed them except for the commodities that you can't raise here. We can't raise corn. Um, there's the cotton seed and soy mix, commodity mix, that we have to have custom made and brought in. So you feed all those things. Mm -hmm. But we raise all the hay and and raise a lot of barley. So that's a huge operation. It is. It keeps, us, it keeps us busy. And where do you send the milk then? Actually, we ship the milk all the way to Logan. Oh, really? Yeah, Gosner's. Why all the way to Logan? That's the only place they buy it. We used to sell it to Chaff and Cheese just outside of Loa. Uh huh. But they went under and closed down, and so. Why did that happen? Do you think? I'm not entirely sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it was a variety of things. Okay. So. And so, there's no local. No place that will buy local milk like Richfield or even Provo. No. Well, apparently there is in Beaver, um, but Gosner's was already okay. uh, established with Chapel Cheese, mm -hmm. so when they closed down, it was just kind of a natural to mm -hmm. to ship to them, and they've been really good to deal with. And, and real helpful, so you know, well, if great. if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Well, that's a huge operation just in itself. And so, you also led the dairy man's life with not many vacations and. Yeah, yeah. Well, now it's it's kind of fun um, with the four of us. Meryl and I primarily do the dairy. Mm -hmm. And so, as long as we arrange with each other, oh, that's um, we can we can take some time. Oh, that's and didn't didn't used to be so bad, but then somebody went and called him as a bishop, and so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but he had to turn to stake president, so there yeah. that's switched. <laughs> and there again, those are huge yeah. jobs. But so. we feel we feel like we're blessed as we support and sustain each other and doing them and so. How nice. And so with this arrangement with the uncles, there were lots of cousins mm -hmm. that have strong bonds as well. So what a what a wonderful place for your children to grow. Yeah. How nice. How nice. And so um, you're far enough from the park that you had your grazing areas when you needed it, when you right. needed them, and uh, right, and it didn't really impact. It didn't really impact us. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, there's been continual concern with the uh, uh, periodic attempts to uh, control the water. Oh, I didn't know about that. Yeah. And that's not that's not been the part, but there's the uh, wild and scenic river acts and things like that, where the federal government has been trying to take control of the water, mm -hmm. um, and those have been concerning thus far. It hasn't would caused this, any problems. Would that problems. do something like take out the reservoirs? And it wouldn't take out the reservoirs, but they would decide they owned the water and they would allocate it as they mm -hmm. wanted it. And here, water is... The water is everything. Everything. Yeah. Dirt's not worth much without water. <laughs> no, it's not. That's so, very good. Um, and, and those kind of things are a concern. Yes. Yeah. Then there's the, there's the sage hen and the prairie dogs mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because when it's hard to make a living <coughs> as it is, then anything that makes it harder is is mm -hmm. going to be very difficult to deal with. Yeah. And living here, 
we've you know managed the range and the forests that we use the mm -hmm. land mm -hmm. and and when other people environmentally want to tell us how to do it oh, a different way yes they don't yes. want us to kill any prairie dogs mm -hmm. but they ruin our farms mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. and so we try to kill the prairie dogs and these other things you know let them live out in the hills but mm -hmm. we've got to make not a in your alfalfa here. fields right right, right. And so that, that's the bad part. When they want to tell us how to manage our land, we can't kill the, the beetles that kill the forests. Ah, and so then our trees die, mm -hmm. and they don't let us, you know, won't take let care them, of that. Won't let them be harvested. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That's difficult. Um, I had heard from someone there was an issue this spring about the, a gravel pit. Yeah. And... What are the details about that? Well, so far as I know, the gravel pit is um, on the bench, um, on, on the Teasdale side of the river, mm -hmm. and um, the main objection that I have heard is it'll create dust that may obscure the sky in Capitol Reef. Mm -hmm. and. Any windstorm kicks up dust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. There's got to be. There's got to be common sense in all of this, because and people this, have still got to be able to live. Right, because this could offer jobs. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. it absolutely does and will. <clears throat> And, uh, and then they bring up any little thing to try to stop it, like, nice. oh, it's going to stir up radioactive nice. material out of the ground, mm -hmm. or it's going to make us not be able to see the stars mm -hmm. and Capitol Reef. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It won't make that much difference. And it doesn't sound very viable. No, it's not. No. We've, we've, in a lot of ways, it's a lot like Aspen became when I was a boy and first going into Aspen to visit my grandparents. Um, Aspen was just a, a quaint little fun town to be in. Mm -hmm. um, and then the ski industry kicked in, and then the, the jet set oh, discovered yes. it. Yes. And uh, gosh, you know, we can get away from LA and we can get away from all these places. and and go to Aspen where everything is just so good. But then when they start gathering in there, um, they don't want to share. <laughs> and uh, they want it to become where they just left. Sort of like the camel that comes in the tent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they're kind of shops, they're yeah. kind of food and cafes. Right. Right. My, well, my dad was still alive. He told me he went into a, a shop there in Aspen. He'd, I had a birthday coming up, and he decided he was going to buy me a nice jacket. And he went in, and, and he found a jacket he really liked. And there was no price tag on it. Mm. And so he finally got the attention of one of the sales guys on the floor, and, and he said, so how much is this jacket? He said, the guy said, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> that's his, oh, you're that's right. <laughs> Very wise, Tony. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. But, um, common people are not really welcome in the shops right. in Aspen. Yeah, and, and it's kind of the same way, not as bad, uh, in, in Tory. Um, that has, that's where uh, a lot of the move-ins have been. And I don't want to sound like I'm against all of them. They're, they're some really good people. And even the ones that are opposed to the gravel pit are really good people. But they have a different mm -hmm. perspective. Mm -hmm. You sure. know, they've made their money. They've, they've made their life. Mm -hmm. And they don't want anything to upset their little idyllic setting. But there's the rest of us yeah. that have to work every day for right. what we've got. Yeah. And uh, something that offers employment, will the gravel pit actually help us? Probably not. Mm -hmm. 
but it helps a lot of the people that mean a lot to us. You know a lot of the young right. families mm -hmm. that need support. You know, and, sure. and uh, there are young people that have come back and are, are working hard to try to make it here yeah. because they want to raise their families here and we want them to be able to. Sure. And they've got to have employment. Right, right. They haven't got the retirement to live on yet. Yeah, because it's still hard to it's make a living in Wayne County. Wayne County. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, that hasn't changed. <laughs> but how lovely that you have been able to raise your family here and and have a successful experience and now to have these grandchildren and enjoy. That's wonderful. Yeah. It's a great place to live. Oh, that's awesome. Now, it, does the word retirement mean anything? <laughs> or when, is that possible? Retirement and retread is a lot the same when you're a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It'll just be a retreading. Retread and run again. <laughs> <laughs> because those are big operations yeah. you deal with. You know, I'd, I'd like to be able to stay involved as long as I'm physically able. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where do you have to go for your medical treatment? Um, the Georgie e. Wallen VA Medical Center is in Salt Lake. Oh, My uh, primary care provider is in Orem. Wow, that's a long but way. But there, there is a Veterans Choice program that helps with a lot of things, just basic uh, medical needs can be met at local facilities um, oh, so where like the VA Richfield. will contract them to do it. And Would that mean Richfield? Uh, some of it, even here in Bakeman. Oh, good. So, good. yeah, they've, they've been really good that way. <clears throat> Excellent. Excellent. I, they get a lot of bad publicity and, and there probably are some, some bad things take place. About what? The Veterans Administration. Oh, okay. um, mm -hmm. When you consider the the number of people they're taking care of and um, my personal experience with the VA has been positive. Oh, I'm so glad. That's um, good. Because it is an enormous It's an enormous operation. operation yeah. That's, I'm so glad it's gone well. So. And Ardell, are you enjoying good health? Yeah. You appear to. That's awesome. <laughs> so far, so good. That's great. That's great. Well, you two have been so wonderful to visit with. And is there anything else you'd like to to mention or talk about? I'm. Yeah, I've talked about things I didn't know I knew. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is great. That is great. Um, you're so nice to come and give us your time because I know you're very very busy and you've got your grandchildren so um, maybe we'll conclude then if unless there's anything else you'd like That's to fine. mention thank you we appreciate it oh thank you this is terrific